Hello, and welcome to the VR Untethered podcast, where we are slowly retethering ourselves in, back to reality just enough in order to have another episode for you. Ta-da. I'm not Brad, that's not Josh. I'm not Brad, and that's not Josh. Correct. And neither am I. Yeah. So. Yes. Not Josh. Josh. Is yes, it, is, not Brad. Did you have any special highlights this week, or was it just making your way back from Mexico and to getting set that back up <laughs> in your house? <laughs> you, you, don't, you don't think that was a highlight? That was a major highlight for me, um, going from uh, three megabit downloads back to my gigabit downloads and being able to restore many games that I thought were downloaded to my headset and found out that they never downloaded because of whatever reason. So I had to spend this past week downloading all the games, updating all the games, um, updating my system, uh, reteaching The Guardian, and getting back used to VR and just in time to buy Song in the Smoke. So those were my highlights this week, which... So the highlight was buying Song in the Smoke. Got it. Well, no, the, the highlight is actually becoming reacquainted I know, I know, with my headset, you know. I Song know. in the Smoke, I'm hoping will be a highlight. Um. It is getting some good reviews, I believe, so. so yeah. We can talk talk about that a little bit more later, but, it, just, but yeah, it sounds like the people are liking it. So. Yeah, it, it does. You know, it's funny because some people are approaching it with the, okay, it's good so far. Don't see how it's going to really keep me going. And other people are very enthusiastic about it. So, right, well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's particular game type is one that you have to enjoy to that game type to, to enjoy the game, I think. Right. You know, so if you don't enjoy survival games where you are dropped in the middle of the desert and you have to craft and build and hunt and forage in order to survive and then go about whatever story, then it's probably not the game for you. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, but it's it doesn't, they do say it does encourage world, you know, going through the world and actually finding right. different things that are hidden there and... Right. Uh, so far, everybody that's played it has had a one or two negative com- or neutral comments, but mostly they seem to be enjoying it. So Right, right. And I've watched a little Green Hell gameplay, not the VR version, obviously, because that's not out yet, but <laughs> the flat screen version of, of, of Green Hell. And it's got a story in there as well as surviving. So, you know, it's not just thrown in there and okay survive bye you know it's you are there on a specific reason and you have to to survive and progress in the story so you know that uh seems good and so as stung in the smoke i'm assuming has a similar mechanic there's a story as well and it's not just surviving right that the I think that's one of the reasons why I don't really like Minecraft, unless it's it's, it's in VR and unless I'm playing with my son, is because it pops you down and there is no story. Right. I mean, there is progression and there are areas to uncover, but there is no story element. You know, it's not really strong on the story. Right. So there's no motivating factor other than your self motivation. So right, right. You know, there's no immediate. Okay. Well, I was just driving my car, and now I'm here. What ha-? you know, or whatever. Right. You know, there's nothing like that. It's just okay. You're here. Right. At least when you were dropped into malls. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, when you're dropped into those games, at least you have some idea. You know, there's somebody saying, "Hey, go there, go do this." Right. <laughs> you know, if, right, you, right. if you're sitting around too long, somebody's going to come and kick you in the butt. But in this other right. game, yeah, you, know, you could just stand there and, like you say, you know, dun, 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 what to right. do next. You know? Right. So yeah, I mean that's a good, that's 
that that's also part of why a lot of people like Minecraft is because it doesn't do as much as much hand holding. No, and normally I'm all for n- no no hand holding or little hand holding as well. But it depends on the game type. I was going to say it depends completely. It's on a the survival game. game type. Some hand holding is needed because some of the things that you need to do had to craft things. You're not going to figure that out on your own, right? Very easy I, at I, all, yeah. and you'll die like 300 times before you figure it out. <laughs> well, that was like one of the games I was reading about that we'll be discussing later, and one of the persons was saying, you know, uh, I tried running over the bridge and it took me 20 times, and I died from the enemy at the end of the bridge. And they wrote back and said, Have you tried Odin Vision to see where you could actually step on the bridge? <laughs> you know, it's like, uh huh, <laughs> you know. Um, okay. You have to learn the game. You can't just jump into a game. You know, it's like even Star Wars. I was playing the pinball game and I played the force table and Mm -hmm. I don't know where my ball dropped, but it must have dropped into a hole that said, okay, face Darth Vader. Because the next thing I knew it was full screen and there's Darth Vader with his lightsaber telling me he's going to kill me while I'm (laughs) playing pinball. So, you know, pretty unexpected, actually. Yeah, I, I mean, that, that sounds pretty unexpected, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, but it was actually kind of fun. I I just have so many games that are either unplayed or just a few minutes in or unfinished. Right. Um, at this point, I could probably spend months, well, at least a month, well, Mikey time a month, my time a month, <laughs> um, catching up with everything and, and actually playing them through to the end. You know? Right. Especially when, it. especially when companies like eSpire, you know, games like eSpire, they just came out with another map and another, like, what? <laughs> How old is this game? Yep, yep, eSpire 1 came out with an update. <laughs> yeah, so that, that, that caught me a little off guard, too. Um, I was expecting just more bugs and patches and whatnot, but no, they added more content, so... I have not yet checked it out, but I probably will at some point. Um, meanwhile, my highlights, uh, I got to try out the new walkabout to mini golf course. It's really well done. Um, you're basically up in the Alps and doing mini golf. Okay. In the Alps. <laughs> you know, I haven't gotten to that one yet. That must be. Skilled, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, that's going to be kind of tough for, tough for mini golf. Um, um well yeah uh, i mean it's obviously shrunk down it's not true life scale alp size stuff you know so you can see it's all of it but you know yeah it um it's fun it's well done they did a really good job of making it look beautiful um the courses or, or the holes, um, the mentions of the wind mechanic, and there is, it doesn't kick in till about halfway through the course, like so, so hole nine, hole eight, so somewhere around there. Um, <clears throat> and then you can see where the wind is going because it's got so it's got the lines and the swirlies and whatnot showing you. Okay. You know, so you can see where the wind is going. So it's not too difficult. You know. Just compensation. But, right. But uh, hole 18, you're up on this uh, the cliff, but basically, and there's a big... Uh, the big chasm here, and you have to get it to to over here where the hole is, and the wind going that way. Okay. So you gotta hit the the ball this way so that it slices because of the wind and lands on the green, and then it because it's coming from from way up here, it hits here and it bounces so high that it hits the rocks in back of it and then bounces again, and yeah. so it's is possible to have it hit wrong and 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 end up bouncing off the edge. <laughs> so. That must be frustrating. 
Have you tried Odin Vision? Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> so yeah, um, it's fun, and they just released the hard mode of it uh, yesterday or the day before, I think. So, uh, they only had the easy mode version of it released initially, but now they've got the hard mode ready, so. Okay. Uh, yeah. Because yeah, how that works is you get the easy mode, and then you you go unlock the hard mode by finding all the hidden balls at each hole in the course. Once you find at least ten hard mode unlocks. Oh. Okay. And then on hard mode, there's a fox hunt. Where there are clues and there are items hidden th- 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 throughout the world, not necessarily throughout the course, but throughout the world uh, that you have to find. Right. So you have to. So it's to explore. Uh, they're all right. doing that now. The right. open world exploration, right. which is fine. You know, right. I mean, in golf, I I don't know. Um, but <laughs> um, well, you don't have to do the fox end, but if you want to. You, you can, and the reward is unlocking a new club that is customized based on that hole or on that course. Okay, you know that that is one of the problems with. It's funny at the beginning there were so few games to choose from that you just bought anything, and now there are so many games that there's only so far you could really take it inside any one game and still have time to play more than that. Just true one true. game. Yeah. So. And it's a a good thing that is reaching that point, I think, because um, if it were still at the, well, I have time to play every game five times over every week, mm, that, that's a sign of a dead market. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> very, very niche. <laughs> no, well, I'm, I'm seeing the growth is amazing in the way that. Yeah. And the fact that they don't hold the games till one o'clock anymore, or, you know, it's like they're available that day, you know, as soon as you go online, it's like, okay, I could pick it up. Um, They're going to have some really stiff competition, I got to say, you know, and I see something like the flow that's coming out and they have other things coming out. Um, I, I am slowing down on how many games I'm purchasing at this point, even though it doesn't seem like it. Because I don't know what my next headset is going to be. I honestly don't at this point. As much as the Quest 3 is holding its allure, looking at the flow and looking at the Apple headset, I'm sort of wondering. I mean, you know, uh, we knew (laughs) that there would be competitors coming, but um, they're coming up fast. They really are. It's like, and prepared. So. So, that said, let's move into the new releases so we can get to talking about those. Okay. We had Loco Dojo Unleashed. Unleashed upon us. Unleashed, yes. Well, you know, it couldn't be untethered, <laughs> otherwise they'd be stealing from us. Um, I have to, uh, you know, a, um, a collection of mini games. while it might be fascinating for a few minutes, it just seems like a... I don't know. I guess it's a good party game, you know. Well, yeah, it's um, a social game, party game. Um, it. Um, I have not tried it. I have not played it. But to me, games that are only mini games, <clears throat> they can be fun. But a mini game in itself is not enough to keep me coming back. Because I don't go seeking out carnival games to repeatedly try to touch the ring on top of the Coke bottle. Right. If I'm going to play a carnival game, I'll yeah, play. Yeah. There's only a limited amount of fun to be had doing that. And that's when you're at a carnival and it's part of the whole carnival experience. And you can't get the whole carnival experience in the VR game yet. You know. <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. And that's, there are certain things that they're doing. I just, um, 
what once again, like you said, to me, mini games, even if it's sixteen mini games, and even if they add more mini games, you really have to be a mini game fanatic, and it just has to be a party thing. And once again, right. now you need multiple people with that headset and that game to be able to do it. So, right. I don't know. Right now, it's not on my bucket list. Um, <laughs> maybe on a daily deal or something in the future. Right. 50% percent right. golf or something i might consider it but just for the collectability but other than right. that it doesn't hold any allure for me although once again uh if i was having a party with friends that had multiple headsets i think i would rent out a space to do uh space pirate arena <laughs> but i know uh, right <laughs> but yeah. i guess loco dojo you don't need quite as much space so probably not probably not but yeah um looks fun uh own Michael uh, said that initially he was getting it just to play with his girlfriend because she was going into that. But then he wrote a glowing review of it the next day, gushing about how fun it was. So it sounds like it is well made. It is fun. It's just for me, I know my personal play style and the preferences I wouldn't be going back to it very often so yeah. I don't want to buy a game that's going to be a one-off experience that's uh, okay I beat all the mini games it took me an hour and a half and now I'm done you know so right well I guess the whole and point. I don't know if it only takes an hour and a half to beat all the mini games obviously <laughs> but I guess it depends on the competition and it depends on all of that stuff so I guess if you have some diehard loco dojo players you know it gets to be a more interesting game and right yeah sort of like um you know any of the racket games or anything that you're into it could be a short game or a long game depending on your skill right right but you know to me like I said, I just haven't seen the allure. At some point, somebody might tell me something different, but for right, right. now. Yep. So, and moving on, we are about to enter the Shadow Gate and go into Shadow Gate VR, Minds of Mythrock. Yeah, why did, it all, why did it sell so poorly that first day? I, I don't know. Um, this, this uh, just to remind people, is a VR report of a game that's been around since the Amiga and the Commodore days. <laughs> I know, I played it on my Commodore and um, my Amiga. <laughs> so I'm wondering why it got such a terrible, well, it didn't get terrible. I think there was one person who gave it five stars. I'm always leery when there's one person <laughs> gives it five stars, like before it's released, <laughs> you know, it's like. Right. Um, okay. um, I don't know, um, I watched Gamer Tag, Played a little bit and um, ended up getting a little frustrated watching him because uh, he had something explaining uh, a mechanic, or whatever, to him that was like two and a half sentences, and he read about five words in and then jumped to the end and goes, Oh, okay, this is health, okay. I have a horrible time reading. I uh, I know I'll probably regret not reading that. <laughs> so. <laughs> okay. Yeah, well, well, that's the thing. You sort of have to pay attention to what they're telling you you have to do. Right. Right. And um, there were uh, a couple of times when just watching, I was like, Oop, I see that. And he, he completely missed it. But no, that, as long as he was having fun with it, that's the the point you know. but how did you like and it? it looked like a fairly well done game it's not as vr -y as the wizard the dark times is as in it's not gesture based it's uh you know you have a staff and you point and you pull the trigger i think it's not a gesture or whatever it's just a right. you know to pull the trigger more traditional um i like the no staff needed just and i've got the fireball you know I said, right that's a little bit more fun for me but <clears throat> excuse me um it does look like it's well made it looks 
very linear, but then again, games back then were fairly linear for the most part. <laughs> that is true. Weren't, it was unusual to have a game with a lot of branching. So, um, so this is it looks like a fairly faithful port to the feel of the original game that is in VR and yeah. I wouldn't mind going through that in VR. It, it yeah. was a fun game to play when it was really yeah. not very fantastic graphically. So I right. mean, <laughs> the side of it would be different, but um, yes. I don't know. That's another one I might wait for. It just seems like it came out of nowhere. It was unexpected and nobody right. bought it. It was unexpected. Um, we were like, wait, what? Huh? What? I know. It was like, <laughs> when did this come out? I was just like. Well, no, I'm. The news, I mean, we uh, spoke about it on that previous right. podcast, but, but yeah, it came out of left field. Hey, by the way, we're making Minds of Myth Rock VR. <laughs> And we released it just now, without even like a fanfare or anything. It was like, okay. Um, but yeah, it does look like something I would like to play. But um, like I said, I right now have about 30 games on my headset I would like to play. So I don't know how quickly I'll add it to my collection. Probably too. Right, <laughs> right. And that's something I would like to to play as well is just like you i've got a lot of my plate and um, i don't know that i will be able to make th the time for it anytime soon so but if i ever do i will probably make a video about it and i will probably include it in my highlights on uh, on a future episode of the podcast so there you go that sounds now tough. we have the song in the smoke da -da -da, my acquisition of the week song in the smoke um very interesting reviews most of them are positive um they say that it looks beautiful that uh the only real complaint i see is the ai for some of the creatures mm -hmm. doesn't seem to be as fully developed as most people would like but mm -hmm. that seems to be fairly normal in these games yeah yeah um that seems to be something that um is true for a lot of Sophia games, as you were mentioning. Um, it, it seems like they dumbed down the AI a little bit because it, 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 it's VR, and you don't have the field of view that you do on a flat game, and you know, it's like. I, I kind of get that, but at the same time, it, it, um, it often ends up feeling a little bit too easy because of that. So, well, that, And that seems to be the problem that people discuss, is that the AI does seem to be dumbed down a bit. And But this <clears> is a problem that we've had not just with mythical animals, but we've had with any sort of opponent in VR. Right. You know, either right. they're too good or, or not good enough. And that's going to be based on the player as much as it is the AI. So if somebody is terrible, then it's going to seem like the AI is too good. True. And if somebody is very good, it's going to seem like the AI is stupid. So True. And it, it can be hard to, to to come up with an AI that in the middle that will feel satisfying. For everybody? For yeah. both of them. Um Onward makes an attempt because when you are in the matches with with AI, you can set the the difficulty mode, which basically determines how intelligent the bots are. Rookie, you can almost walk up to them and tap them on the shoulder before they respond. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, no, they, no. You spawn in and immediately are taking fire from across the map. But that's so, good that they because they are that. laser accurate from across the map. <laughs> right, but if if you're that good, then that's the type of you know enemy right. that you want. And if you're a rookie, that's not the type of enemy you want. So yeah, <laughs> right. So, 
you know, it's good to be able to give the person playing the choice to decide whether or not they're a rookie. But with Onward, you know, it's a multi-team player game. So it's, you know, you're going right. to have people of all different calibers, uh, right. no pun intended. Um, I'm a 50 caliber. I would imagine that's a mother, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of calibers and whatnot, uh, uh, on a little side note, uh, so I guess I should have mentioned this in a highlight as well. Um, m- my son and I have been uh, for his um, his reading or language art stuff. Um, been been going through th- uh, the Great Book of Battles for Boys, World War Two. So it's going through different World War II battles and they're in explaining it. And uh, there are some cool little things in there that I didn't know. Like I, I, you know, I didn't know about the Winter War before, and uh, we just read the chapter about the Bismarck. Oh so, well. The Bismarck yeah. was the finest ship to ever sail the seas. Uh, it was a great song. Uh, the sinking yeah. of the Bismarck. I remember that, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, so yeah. It, um, uh, and it was so talking about the, the 14 inch guns and the 15 inch guns. And, you know. Yeah. Well, yeah. It was so that's yeah. why yeah. I was reminded because of the, the caliber comment. <laughs> gotcha. Uh, I was thinking zero caliber when at that, but it's like, yeah, you get to be, cal- you know, it's crazy. Here we are in VR and people are, are like, you know, well, loading this gun doesn't feel natural. Well, dude, you're holding two controllers. Of course, loading the gun doesn't feel, whatever you do, it's not going to feel natural unless you. Well, it's not going to feel completely natural, but, but there are ways of making it feel more natural. Well, to me, the thing that I saw just recently is the gun um, grips that they're selling on Amazon for mm-hmm. the uh, Quest 2 holders. Those right. look like they would be a lot of fun when you're doing pistol whip and some of these. You know, well, yeah, and that's why so, some people use them for, yeah. I, could just... um, I have, as you know, a gun stock. You know, um, it's very light. It's nowhere near the weight of a real gun. Probably not even near the weight of an of a pistol. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, so if I wanted to, I could hold it out just like this with and just <laughs> one handed and it yeah. would, okay, you know, not a rifle for sure. I got it. <laughs> no, uh, but it allows for some uh, more realism in feeling the gun because it's got a butt stock that busts up again. There, it's got. You know, that stock that so it goes out like that, so you so it can get in the way, you know, so you hit, so they can't just go, okay, throw the, you know, because you'll hit the, 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 the gun stock if you do it that way, you know. So, you know, but yeah, and it helps a little bit with uh, stabilizing your hand when you are trying to aim with a sniper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I know you like sniping. I've been the recipient of several of your sniping bullets, so I understand. Uh, and you're pretty good at it, which sucks. But other than that, uh, well, everybody I'm not as good at it. Uh, I'm not as good at it in Onward as I was in in Pop One. Yeah, all and even people... even um, um, uh, in Pop One, I'm like probably at the bottom of the skill range on sniping there are are other people that that i can take to take the off and go gotcha yeah. uh, <clears> you know it's scary so. it really is but um and all of a sudden people are complaining about pop one mechanics being too arcadey i mean what the heck? i know that was- a concern way back at the beginning and then people got used to it and now people are complaining about it again i'm not entirely sure what's what's going on there i don't know i mean it's always been arcadey that's just how it is it was it's what made it fun was the your ability to react quickly and all this other stuff i mean you know so i have to jump back in there it's been a while since i played pop one yeah well um personally my opinion is you can have a battle royale game that is 
the pen and have realistic reload <laughs> at the same time. Uh, like Virtual Battlegrounds, which failed kind of sort of because it wasn't on the Quest. You know, it was only on the PC. But, um, but it was fun. I greatly enjoyed that when I played it as well, and it had realistic re- reloads. You know, and you could, instead of having to get a new gun, you could find a site and attach the site to your gun. Find a better site later on, pull the old site off, put the new site on. You know, so you could... Are you frozen or... Yes, I think you were frozen. Welcome back uh, to the Untethered Podcast. Uh, you are not aware of this, but now you are because we are in the process of telling you. We had a major interruption and had to postpone recording the last half of it for the last part of the day. Um, because all sorts of internet issues were were getting in the way, making it freeze and all that. So, But now we are back. Ta-da! Yeah. Yay. <laughs> Are you going to start wearing your crown now? Is Imperial Margarine going to show up? And did I just give away my age or what? Um, we both give away our age. That's true. Yes, I have a crown now. It doesn't suit you. Well. It doesn't fit you. Oh, there you go. <laughs> so, so anyways, um, we were not talking should... about... Song in the smoke and, and all that, but I forget exactly where we left off. So let's just move on to the news because <laughs> I I failed to, to confirm and take a list of the upcoming t- 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 titles next week. I'm sure there are some upcoming. I just there are. There's always, but you know, we don't yeah. even know when they're upcoming. It's like um, the game we were talking about before, yeah. uh, the yeah, Dungeon right. Crawler. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Or so, yeah. So. By anyways, the way, it's got what? a lot more reviews. It, it has a lot more reviews, and most of the people are very happy with it. Yes. Yes, I believe it. So um, um, it looks like a well done game if you're into that kind of game, and if you're not, then uh, you you probably don't want to get it. But if you are into that kind of game, then you you might want to get it. Wow, you're really going to go out on a limb like that? And see- <laughs> yes. <laughs> but like, as opposed to game. I would recommend not getting it on a day like Tuesday. Okay. Because? Well, there was a big Facebook outage on Tuesday. Ah, uh, yes. That would not be. Well, that's not the day to download it, but you could try purchasing it. Yeah, well, um, I don't think that would have worked either because you uh, couldn't pull up the website. No, I guarantee you they had a way of taking in your cash. I guarantee there was a way of taking your money. All you had to do was say Zuckerberg, 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 and... Oh, God, that would (laughs) be scary. Someone at your door. (laughs) No, him. (laughs) (laughs) It's the Zuck. God. Um, but yeah, that uh, was a big, huge outage for, I think it was about uh, six hours total or something like uh, that. Um, and uh, things are still a little bit wobbly because they always are after a, after an outage like that. So. Right. Well, you know, now that they've gone on to Windows 11, uh, I'm sure there are server issues. I'm sure there are server side issues. I'm sure there's all sorts of programming issues. With, whenever you're running more than one operating system, mm-hmm. it's about that. That's why I only run. Uh, I only run one operating system. My brain. And as you can tell, even it can barely handle operating my mouth. <laughs> I see. I see. It's, it needs an upgrade. <laughs> Uh, you're gonna update to Josh six point three. Well, or, uh, my my speech module was was damaged at birth because um, I didn't have the proper hearing module installed. So uh, it was an oversight, but it's been corrected since. So 
It's fine. Yeah. But I got a used hearing module, so it, you know, the, the, the speech module is still a little bit a little bit wonky sometimes. Yeah. Really dull. Well, you know, it takes some time to break it in, that's all. You know, give it another 10, 20 years. Oh, okay. So, now that we have talked about the Facebook outage, and... Well, no, we were talking about <laughs> your Facebook well, Some people were happy about it. Some people were unhappy about it. Some people were like, hey, we have something to report in the news now. Well, yeah, except the thing is that, like, every business in India operates off of Facebook, and so many businesses in third world countries use Facebook as their only source True. of advertising well, and revenue. A lot of um, a lot of businesses here in the U.S. do as well. So, right. And they don't have a web page, all they have is a Facebook page. So... It's, uh, yeah, that's one of the reasons why, with everything that's happening now, you know that Congress, everybody in Congress hates them now, anyway. So, um, yeah, I wouldn't want to be Zuck this week. Um, yeah. Wasn't his best week. Um, and it's probably not going to get much better. Zuck? Excuse me? And so, do you ever want to be Zuck? Um, well, yeah, on those days when I just want to be able to you just want to anything. have his money and his uh, his lifestyle, I see. Right. <laughs> That's it, you know. But to be him, no. Yeah. But his money and his lifestyle, uh, yeah, no problem. Okay, I see. So anyways, um, we also got a release trailer, and I know this is a little bit old news, but uh, we, we didn't talk about it last week because we didn't have an episode last week uh medal of honor quest release trailer came out so oh is that the 40 gig program yes. that they're going to yeah, release for the quest be, or, um it was initially said between 40 have 45 gigs and and then i think it was confirmed that it was about 40 gigs yeah. so if you yeah, have a 64 gigabyte <laughs> quest 2 after you remove what the operating system itself takes up, that's, that'll be your only game on that device. Correct. Uh, now you know why they released the 128, you know, yeah. before Metal. They had to, because otherwise yeah. it's like you're saying, anybody with the original 64 must be freaking out, you know. Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean they've got to uninstall my 100 games? <laughs> well, there's that, and there's also having just just acquired a quest 2 you're about to get smacked in the face with the quest pro or quest 3 really soon i think that sounds like there you know it seems like every time i look at their page it's coming quicker <laughs> you know it's almost yeah. like a train to the doppler effect i can hear it getting closer and closer so yeah uh so we've got medal of honor coming to the quest uh we don't have a release date yet um all we have is a trailer um it um i don't i would hope that they learned from the criticism that they got on the pc release and fix or change something but at the same time realistically that there are some things that were complaints that they probably can't fix because then it would make it a completely different game like one of the complaints with the ultra small stories the chapter things you know, the ultra small scenes and then only like what 20 scenes in did it just start getting longer you know, they're, they're probably not going to change that but right but oh, look, hopefully they, other things, they changed and made it work better, so. Yeah, well, that's just it. I mean, it's like also Resident Evil coming out. It's going to be an interesting way to play Resident Evil because people are now going to have direct yeah, comparisons. Yeah. You know? I saw that. I was like, okay, so you can't actually physically go through a window. You, you uh, kind of step out of your body and watch your body do it and then if you're doing the quick time event where you've got a kick you are watching yourself street fighter like yeah through the window <laughs> and like, yeah it's like I, I don't know about that seems a bit immersion breaking to me yeah um you know like yeah yeah 
like in Creed, the first time they knocked me out of my body, it was like, um, yeah, cool effect, but kind of immersion breaking. <laughs> You know, I, yeah, yeah. Um, well, th- that's that's how it works in, um, in Gargantua as well. If you get knocked back, you know, you were uh, kind of get knocked out of your body a bit. Right, happened that way in Doctor Strange. But it's a little bit also. different, so it, it, it feels a little bit better, I think. Um, because, partially because you, you don't have to go you have to get back in your body. <laughs> right. Yeah, uh, there you go. That that, that was annoying as you know, that really was annoying. <laughs> but um still immersion breaking is not a way to go. And it sounds like they really just cheaped out on the animation and oh. I don't know. Yeah. I'll have to say. I mean, I'd rather experience that the kickboxing scene rather than watch it. And well, yes, I know they can't track your feed and all that, but they can assign a button for kick. Oh, uh, yeah, I know. I, I've used I mean, that. But... The Path of the Warrior did that, right? <laughs> Correct. That Path of the Warrior, that was the only way to go sometimes with the kick. And yes, it did assign it, and it was kind of weird. Yeah. But, but <laughs> it works with the game, and you know, you're playing it, it's. It's better than trying to actually kick and not have any sort of reaction. So, yeah. yeah. True. Dang it. I did 20 front, front kicks in a row when I felt it connect. Why didn't <laughs> the guy go? Oh. I'm sorry, honey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, speaking of connect, that would be the perfect time to use it as well. But, um, yeah. yeah uh, later on in the news, we'll save that for the new uh, Sky Glass. TV that they have would connect. Did you know that? So if you want to talk about that now, go ahead. I don't have that. <laughs> oh, I think Sky, that's one yeah. Sky is making an all-in-one TV, which I assume will have video games built in because Connect is being built in as well. Nice. Sort of, I guess, bigger than Soli and cheaper through Microsoft, but. Okay. Uh, they're building an all-in-one TV for European use, it seems like, since Sky is much bigger in Europe than it is here in the States. And, um, you know, so, yeah, it seems like they're building an all-in-one TV, is what they call it. So, hmm. the cable mm-hmm. box will be built in, the mo- everything will be built into it. So, that's kind of intriguing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds interesting. Um, it would probably also raise concerns to some people about whether their their TV were watching them. <laughs> Honestly, I I believe very very. I, I said at the very these if they were ever going to put a pinhole in and put in a camera and a microphone, that would be the time. And. <laughs> I, I have no doubt my TV is watching me, aside from all the appliances I bought that respond to my voice, so they're on call 24-7 listening to everything else that's going on. No matter no. what they say. So, anyways, moving on. Qualcomm acquired Wicketude. Wicketude was one of the earlier uh, augmented reality over at apps. Um, on the phone, it was aimed at providing information um, about businesses around you and how far away they are, the name, little little bits of information and all that. And and now Qualcomm has acquired them. So why? Well, why is not? Qualcomm now going to compete directly with what? What's Qualcomm going to do with it? I don't, I don't know. What's Love got to do with it? <laughs> Everything. Oh, okay. Love is all there is. Love is all. There love is. is all there is. All you need is love, huh? Okay. All you need yes. is love. It's a beetle fest. Yeah. Have I bored you? Or are you leaving? No, no. Now? <laughs> I'm on my laptop, which is slow at looking at websites, so I wanted to pull the article back up. Um, About the wicked Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I mean, why not do it on our viewers' time? That sounds like a really well. No, 
I'm gonna go through my phone book right now. <laughs> so, um, yep. Global Semiconductor Company Qualcomm has recently acquired Wikitude. Um, and they have been working together since 2019 when Wikitude optimized its AR platform for Snapdragon 855 mobile platform. Uh, back then, Wikitude's platform was also the only one of its kind that would run across all operating systems. Uh, no press release has been put out by the company yet, so it's still speculated as to why, but remember, they were going to the, um, th or they announced their Snapdragon XR1 AR Smart Viewer reference design, which basically means they are, um, they are building one, and it's what better way to have have AR stuff optimized for their their chip than to acquire an AR company that you know already knows how to do how to do that. So well, that's probably most of it. What it's about? Maybe they'll you know should branch out and they'll actually make uh, more reference design. Uh, the physical copy units, you know, I don't know, but you know, or maybe they'll offer an AR optimized for their the chipset um, AR API, you know. Right. So it just seems strange with all the companies that are now focusing on building their own chipset for their own devices. It's kind of interesting that. You know, a company that's sort of generic would acquire. You know, that's all. Okay. Um, there was also an article that I ran across outlining, I think, eight or ten, I forget which ways that AR and VR is being used on the International Space Station. Most of those are experiments and or training. You know, um, but several of them were sort of like I was like, okay, that's a stretch to call it a, di a different thing because you're doing the same thing as one of the other steps, you know, or has one of the other quote unquote uses. Okay, okay, you were frozen there for a second. Uh, again, um, hopefully, we don't need to call it again. <laughs> That would um, be good. Uh, yeah. But um, basically, one of the things is using a HoloLens with an an overlay on a piece of technology you are repairing, or that you are so diagnosing to to see if it needs repairs and where and all that, and uh, it can say, connect to Earth and be almost real time, or it can have a Computer guided overlay. So, okay. you know. that's interesting. I mean, on the job training for an astronaut, that's kind of yeah. cool. Uh, yeah. You know, the captain's so, dead. <laughs> yeah. And there's also one one use that's essentially VZ fit, where um, it does VR usage help the astronauts exercise more, motivate them. To, to, to exercise more often, you know, as opposed to, okay, I got my 20 minutes in, I'm done, you know. <laughs> well, of course. So. I mean, why wouldn't it work in space as well as it does right. down here, right? Right. So, I mean, a lot of it is kind of, well, yeah, uh, that makes sense. I would expect that. But there are also AR apps uh, and VR apps being used to, uh, and I don't know all the details on this, but to test and study how the astronaut's perception of time changes because they don't have the the uh, same diurnal the biorhythm uh, up there as we do here you know right, right. so uh, that would be okay that's the one interesting thing so far that you've actually said that they're doing <laughs> the rest yeah, so. of it seems like you, can well, do it, you know it's like yeah. 
it's interesting that they are doing stuff at all with it. And yeah. it's also interesting that the headsets are working up there. You know, so given that part of what they rely on is the magnetic field sensing, which is completely different up there than it is here on, here on Earth. Well, to me, what's the most interesting is that every time we talk about something that has to do with America and military usage, it's being developed by Microsoft. And the only person that hasn't developed anything for our use for VR or AR is Microsoft. So it's kind of intriguing that their hollow oh, is being used. Microsoft. So the VR headset wasn't what was it's a picture. It was, um, it looked like a, um, a CV1. So, anyways, um, while you are frozen again for me, uh, Panther uh, Dragon VR frozen. was an announcement earlier on that they were working on a Panther Dragon VR game. But evidently, the status on that is unclear at this point because they announced it was being canceled because of the death of the lead person working on it. Only it turns out that person isn't actually dead. He's still alive and, and well, thank you very much. <laughs> so it is unclear if they are still abandoning the project, if they're not. So... Oh, now that they found out he's alive, they'll have to come up with a different excuse if they want to abandon Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. It seems... Yeah. And another... Yeah. Uh, for PR, I guess. Yeah. And another fairly big piece of news is Oculus. Yeah. And, you know, which is a way to rid your quest of Facebook. Problem is, that disables you, almost all of it that right. would be useful. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It, it, it turns it into a use, you know, unless you're going to use it strictly for using your PC and right. a, a few. Everything that Oculus gives you, you know. Right. Um, I have heard, or if I remember right from what I read, um, if you have it connected with AirLink to your computer, that will still work. Uh, you know, you don't have to be logged into the Facebook on the Quest device itself. You just need to connect to your computer, and so if you're logged in on there. It, It'll still work, and it, uh, the virtual desktop, however, would not work because the, because that has had an entitlement check. So right. you would have to sideload one of the other options, uh, which are not as, in my opinion, well developed and uh, well tested as a virtual desktop, or use. Airlink, which puts you right back into Facebook land because you are using the Oculus app on your computer. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So it's it. That's what I was trying to think. It's like how how does this serve your purpose in any way, shape, yeah. or form, other than to go na 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 for five minutes, you know, yeah. until you want to update your game or use any of the Oculus. Yeah, yeah. and it's recommended that you avoid system updates because they could always break things. And yeah. It's Personally, I wouldn't go that route. It's interesting that someone wanted that badly enough that they figured out how to make it happen. I'm not going to be testing it. No. So. <laughs> it, it just sounds like a great way to destroy your quest. Yeah. And, uh, uh, well, I, I mean, if you did um, the factory reset on it, you could break well, you know. True, but I you know, so it wouldn't be completely destroyed necessarily until you did the factory reset, you know, and then it wouldn't be, be destroyed anymore. So, uh, the Lynx headset, the Kickstarter, has been fully funded, I believe. So, uh, that is cool, but the, the, the headset itself still kind of looks a little bit weird. So, to me, it looks like um, so some of the so stuff is so it looks like it's got flaps on the lenses, so that you know it's like 
you have the really narrow opening here and the two lenses are like or and the flaps are like almost so touching your eyeballs so to block out peripheral i would hope that that's removable because some of the other images also showed a an actual shield around like who what quest has and then casing out there so i'm guessing maybe two different options i don't I'm know not, it's, you know, yeah i know and it did look by default from what, the one i i saw about Okay, you're frozen again on my screen. My apologies if I am talking over you. Um, it also, uh, by default, comes without controllers and relies on the hand tracking. You can get controllers if you go to the back tier, but the controllers track a little bit so, so differently. They rely on the hands on the controllers to track the, the positional of the controllers. The controllers right. themselves just have the rotational and the uh, capacitive stuff. So it's a, a different solution to the problem and we'll we'll find out how well it works after people start getting there sometime next year and, <laughs> and make videos Maybe about the supply chain right you know it's going to be an interesting year when these things actually get delivered when they get promised and when they get delivered that'll be interesting yeah, yeah. so niantic speaking of acquisitions has acquired Haas, which i had not heard of before until i read the article and it's basically a company that delivers software product api solutions or, or whatever so it's, i'm not quite sure what the significance of it is but one reason i wanted to mention it is because twitch recently has been having a, a lot of issues with bots invading streams and and following and and supposing nasty stuff and all that one of the biggest bots that was being used was being called the Haas bot because mm. it would be a username of Haas underscore one five nine seven nine two eight or <laughs> Haas underscore six five four nine 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 eight five <laughs> gotcha. Okay. So, yeah. So, <clears throat> anyway, we'll come back. There's really not a lot, you know, to that story. The Niantic is still making acquisitions, building its AR global empire. Yeah, right. <laughs> global uh, domination empire. Well, <laughs> when they when they finally do launch it, it'll at least be working to some degree. Yeah. You know, they'll have yeah. a chance of testing. It it, so. Like it, yeah. So, Bank of America uh, is using VR f for training in a very big way. But first, they had to partner with another <laughs> another company to help them overcome the privacy and security concerns with it. Because, well, as a bank, and much more privacy and security concerns than with a say Walmart. <laughs> yeah. Well. well. <laughs> Right. So, yes, I I can see that. So, <laughs> it's interesting. No. It uh, just shows they are still going strong in that respect. It's growing. You know, I mean that one more it's, giant step towards mainstream adoption. You know, so. Except I am hoping that the recording is is a mix of your end and my end so that is getting your audio <laughs> i hope so because uh, i'm seeing myself perfectly so i'm hoping right. that you're getting yeah, it i know <laughs> which is also why i'm trying to rush through the, the all the rest of these <laughs> right no no please do please do yeah. i'd like to uh vibe had their go with the flow event on october 14th where they are announcing their 
Vibe Flow. <laughs> Which looks so, great. I mean, uh, let's yeah, face it. And I believe that's going to be held in Engage VR as per usual with them. So, 5K yeah. and actual movable IPD and 120 full FOV. And, oh my God. It sounds like yeah. Yeah, uh, I know. I'm drooling. $3,000. How much? But you will get one and then never use it. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, that's just it. It's Vive, and I don't know if they're going to want you to hook it up to a phone or what they're going to do with it. Right. Well, yeah, yeah. And, and I mean, I like Vive in many ways. I like, you know, their actual headsets. I don't like their wands, and I've heard bad things about the index controllers and their fragility. <laughs> right. Well, I have their wands, and I have the Vive, and I have the Vive Pro One, and they are much more comfortable than the Quest ever hit, but at the same token, they were much more expensive, and, um, you know, we'll see. We'll see where it goes at this point. Um, they've disappointed more than delighted, and yes. their pricing seems to be more on the commercial side than on the um, consumer side. And now for the last two pieces of news that I'm going to combine into one. Wow, magic. Facebook and SideQuest, whether deliberately or not deliberately, are kind of, it could be viewed as they are kind of going to, to war with each other in order to provide funding to help encourage the creators and developers. That's not really, no, that's a sensationalized way of saying it, but the side quest got $3 million to help devs go multi-platinum. I mean, multi-platform. <laughs> <laughs> right. And, um, um, and, and Facebook is trying to revive Horizons. Yep. I and know. Facebook Horizon has been renamed to Horizon Worlds, and they also are, are funding to support the creators within Horizon Worlds. Oh, it's so, kind of late. And yeah, I, I know. It's like at this point, it's like uh, I think SideQuest Drive is going to have more success. The Facebook one, I wish them luck, but it's. It's been moving way too slow. Oh, so it remains ridiculous. to be seen how successful this push is. I hope it works because Horizon Worlds has potential. It, it just needs to, uh, it needs to get there. What's, you know, uh, what's you know. Again, uh, I'm just sitting here thinking about Dead and Buried and Dead and Buried 2 and what a great game it was and how they abandoned it and you know, I, you know, I don't know. We'll see what happens. All I know is that they really had something good when they started Horizon, and they did nothing with it. Absolutely nothing. So, right, I know. Here, uh, hoping. We'll see. Hopefully, um, they are. Uh, this is a sign that they are going to push harder on it and get it ready, get it perfected, get it out there. Um, one thing I think that would help them a lot is if they made it not invite only and just opened it to, to everybody. Well, um, yeah, I agree. So just open it. That'll get people coming in, checking out what's there, but uh, they obviously don't feel that it's ready for that yet, quite yet. So They could do it by invite still, but I mean, truly, just open it up and let people, you know, I, I know. I think that, that they're crazy the way they're doing it, but it should be more of an open community. Yeah, it, it really should. But anyway, on that note, that brings us to the end of part two of our podcast. <laughs> um, but about, okay. So, yeah. I hope it meshes together. And, yeah. You know, well, it's whole... not going to mesh together seamlessly, but you know, it should hopefully not be too jarring to the viewers. I mean, to Sedna. <laughs> I said that. <laughs> so, on that note, I said thank you for watching. And if you got to the end, I would say thank you for getting to the end. <laughs> I'm sure not many people do. Um, 
<laughs> and remember to like and subscribe, drag your friends over, take their hands, smash it on the keyboard until they like and subscribe. After making them log in to their account. Because otherwise they would make you unlike and, subs- and unsubscribe. And then you would need to go through this all over again. So uh, That's a pain. Yeah. You wouldn't want yeah. to do it. Worse than Horizons, I know. Yeah, so anyways, on that note, bye. Have a great rest of your week. Have fun.